So I, I want to welcome everyone to this more chat, Bricklaying Robot Reclads Federal Building. Our presenter today is Steve Tresser. Steve is a principal and managing director for Walter B. Morris Diagnostics Group in Washington, DC. His 35 year career has spanned welding, steel, sheet metal, construction, architecture, and engineering. He is a licensed engineer and architect with expertise evaluating and designing repairs for buildings with distress related to clay masonry, building envelope moisture management, concrete structures, below grade and roofing systems. And so with that, I'll hand it over to you, Steve. Thanks, Chris. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Uh, like Chris mentioned, I'm Steve Tresser with Walter P. Moore. And today I'll be talking about a really interesting project where a robot was utilized to reclad a uh, federal building in Roanoke, Virginia. Essentially, this, had a, this project was challenging for a couple of reasons. Um, it's, it's a large um, two-sided brick facade. In other words, four sides. Two of the four sides are all brick masonry and they're without any openings or deviations from a flat, and you know, tall and wide, completely brick surface. So any any kind of imperfections would be very obvious. And this project has had a lot of um, a lot of attention. The the contractor once they got started on the project and and essentially removed all the brick that was that was um, had issues. Essentially, they realized that they had a, a labor challenge and the. Security clearances were part of that challenge. So in order to reclad this building, which was approximately 250,000 bricks, they realized that they needed a, another solution. So they, they presented the potential to do this with a, with a robot. And the one they selected is called SAM, which stands for Semi-Automated Mason. And it's a bricklaying robot. And um, everyone was kind of skeptical to be started. To, to start with, because it was relatively new in 2017. So essentially the federal government paid for me to fly up to New York to see this robot and uh, take a look at its performance and its capabilities. So here's a, here's a kind of a close up of a sample wall that this robot, the SAM 100 built with the exact same bricks and mortar that were going to be used on the um, on the same building as uh, the one in Roanoke, essentially it was all the same materials. And um, the idea was to build this wall, observe this the robot during construction of this wall, and then test it to see how it performed. So I've got a short video, and I hope hope it doesn't skip around or anything, it's really interesting. Um, but this short video will show you, it's, it's a, just a quick clip just showing you laying one brick. And uh, I'll play it for you real quick. So I hope you could see that and it didn't glitch too much. I know that's hard on this type of a format, but there's, it's really interesting to see this robot for the first time and on the site. And one thing that you can't see, or I, I'm guessing you couldn't hear the audio, but essentially the robotic arm senses a laser and, and then knows exactly where it's oriented. And then it vibrates the brick as it's placing it, which is a key component to this, the performance characteristics that this robot's able to achieve. There's some, some more really interesting parts of this robot are that essentially you've got a uh, the control box. So this is the control side of the robot and you've got the control panel. You've got a, a, a mortar mixing box right there in front of you with an auger in the bottom that's always running. So it's always mixing the mortar and providing pressure to the nozzle that's on the other side. Also right here, you can see there are two optional alternative or non-standard brick conveyor belts that the robot knows when to grab bricks from those if you so choose, whether it's a half brick or a different colored brick. And then on the 
on the right side of the robot is the, is the brick conveyor for all the standard size brick. And um, there's also some interesting things on the right side. You have the two propane tanks that provide uh, power to the unit. In other words, there's a generator that generates electricity to run the machine, so it can run, it can run continuously. And there's quite a few safety controls on this side as well. There's a, a gate on the right-hand side that if there's any contact with that gate, it stops the machine. And the wheels on the bottom that are white, those essentially are bumpers that um, provide safety for any kind of obstruction that might get in the way of the track. And you can see the track here also that the little blade is running on and is guided by. One thing that's obvious once you see this robot work is how perfectly it lays these bricks. The, the joints are all aligned. The faces are all on the same plane. It's plumb, it's level. And even more than that, the performance is extraordinary. When you look at the back side of this wall when it was built, we left it open on purpose to observe this. The consistency of the head and bed joints is, is obvious. And when the, when the robotic arm vibrates as it's setting the brick, it provides a, a fantastic bond between the mortar and the brick. So much so that when we tested this brick wall, it was quite surprising to me. I've done a lot of ASTM E514 tests where you build a test chamber that's three feet by four feet and you put varying pressures, but you finally get to 10 PSI. And what I've seen on buildings literally ranges from 100 liters per hour going through the brick down to a pretty darn good wall is five liters per hour in the field. Now, when a normal wall is built, an acceptable level is one liter per hour of water to pass through that wall. When this wall was tested, it, there was zero. No water came through, not a drop. Only one spot was slightly damp, which was, to me, just a great testament to how well this thing performs once it's laid, once the bricks are laid. The next video I have for you is a close up of the back of the wall. And again, it's just going to lay one brick, but hopefully you'll be able to see, um, you know, with a little bit more uh, accuracy exactly how this robot works. So I'll play this video. So one thing that's really interesting is that the, the robotic arm grabs a brick that's pre-measured in a box that's fed from the conveyor belt. And then it picks up the brick and on an angle, it runs it past the nozzle, which applies mortar to two sides of the brick. Then the arm comes up, senses the, the laser, which you can kind of see the little red dot there. And it orients itself and places the brick exactly where it's supposed to be and then vibrates it as it places it. Once the testing was done and the review of the robotic arm on in, in, in New York was completed, everybody was uh, impressed and, and willing to give it a try. So once we got to the job site and got up to a level where essentially we had enough clearance to do the work and we didn't have a curved wall, there were curved walls on the, on the base of this wall, um, the robot started performing. And there were, of course, a couple of hiccups getting used to the site and getting used to the operation. But the robot performed fantastically. It was, it was consistent and it was fast. And there were approximately four, five, or six people providing mason, providing mortar and bricks and, and, and programming and so forth to the robot. And of course, the masons had to do all the pointing and so forth. But in general, uh, the robot's about five times as fast as a mason. It lays an average a brick in an average of every 9.1 seconds. And compared to a mason, a good mason that, that is 
laying full head and bed joints, not just a speed mason, but a, a, a good performing wall is about 600 bricks per day. And that's that varies in you know, different opinions and so forth. After being up there for several weeks, the and after the whole job was over, the, the robot averaged 3,000 bricks a day. And on its best day, it laid 4,101 bricks. Some of the some of the things that were part of getting this robot up and running were this is a view of the right side of the robot. There's a little blue box on the right hand side with the what's actually carrying the laser. And when the arm reaches out, there's you can kind of see a little orange disc on the bottom of the arm right there. And it's below the laser at this point in time, but it reaches out and touches that laser before it lays every brick. And then it sets the brick in place. And that is what allowed it to be consistent every single time. Here's a close up of the robot laying the next course on site. And you can see that the mortars coming out of the joints on the front side, just like it does on the back. And the masons come along afterwards and scrape that off and then point it. But it's, uh, it's a very, very efficient operation. And as long as the, the robot has bricks and mortar, it can do about four to five uh, courses before it needs, before the, uh, the mass climber is raised up, at least in this job site. And the mass climber itself was an interesting um, setup. It, it had to be adjusted only, you know, every so often, but um, the laser itself was adjusted as the mast raised. And here's a pretty good view of the mast climber and the robot riding that rail, that guide rail that keeps it relatively uh, in the same plane as the wall. But the laser is a real trick in keeping it aligned perfectly with each course. The, the final performance of this robot ended up being approximately 70% of the bricks placed on the entire building. Some of the edges were not accessible by the robot. That's one of the challenges with this robot is it doesn't really turn a corner. The fact that there were no windows or doors in the wall and it was straight up and down made it ideal for the, for the robot. And essentially this robot required, out, say six conservatively masons at, the, at, at all times and comparing it to a two mason crew, which would be a total of about six masons, it saved approximately a hundred days of construction. The end result, everybody was happy with. Uh, the walls are perfectly straight. They, they, are, they look beautiful. And um, the, some of the issues with the masonry that had, had come up prior were essentially gone. And, and it's a very prominent building in Roanoke. So it was, it was important for this project to turn out well after there had been so many issues with the building. So the PAW Federal Building is, a, uh, is now a showpiece for Roanoke instead of um, having issues like it had previously. Any questions? Steve, that is a fantastic presentation. Really, really interesting. I hope this is the future of construction for us. Um, I could start off with, with questions. I, I guess my first one, sure. you, you um, briefly mentioned some of the, the, the defects of the existing um, brick veneer. Could you elaborate of what the instigator of this project was? Why sure. did that recladding have to happen? So essentially this building is 14 stories tall. And when it was first, uh, when the brick was first applied, there were no control joints and there were no expansion joints vertically or horizontally. As brick, as brick um, takes on water essentially over time, it grows. And that, that needs to be part of the design when, when a building's constructed. So the brick expanded and after a few years and after several years, it became obvious that there were issues. The main problem was that it was tearing itself from the anchors on the face of the wall. And at the top of the wall, it literally tore the parapet off of the building. So the building 
the surround the area around the brick walls on each end had to be closed off uh, for safety because bricks were literally starting to fall. And that, you know, and, and essentially what they did was they tore off one whole side of the building right away. And it was left standing like that for quite some time. And it was an eyesore to the community and, and attracted a lot of attention. So this was really critical to fix this correctly. So in the repair, the design was for there to be an expansion joint every floor vertically, and then every, I believe, 30 feet horizontally. But it worked out roughly to that, so that it came out with a, a grid pattern that is relatively obvious, but it, it looks it looks appropriate for the building. Hey, Steve, this is Amos. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very sure. interesting. Uh, I was just wondering how many masons are required um, to assist when um, it's being employed in the field. Well, that. I, I did, I think I did briefly mention that there were four to six, so average five or six to be conservative, but I can tell you one of the issues that came up when, when the robot was first proposed was that it was going to be taking jobs away from Masons, and essentially it, it used as many Masons as a typical crew would need, um, but it was just five times faster than one crew. I mean, if you had two crews, it was roughly, you know, two and a half times faster, but the, the end result was, um, was just, everyone was pleased with it. Thanks for the questions. Great. Thanks. Sure. Steve, this is Dale. How you doing? Man? Good Dale. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I just wondered about those vertical expansion joints. How are the half bricks fed into the robot? So on this project, because there was such a long run, um, there were very few half very few half bricks had to be fed in. So essentially, um, there's that conveyor on the front of the there's two conveyors on the front of the unit, and you that was loaded with half bricks. So at each end, the program told the robot to take a half brick and place it on the ends as needed. Okay, actually, so at the, you're right. At the control joints, there were some half bricks too. That's a good point. The so vertical. that's all programmed in. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Cool. Nice. Sure. Thanks, thank you. Steve. Uh, great Thanks. presentation. Thank you. I was wondering, how did the materials get up to the robot? Let's see if I can get an image of that back up here. There's essentially a um, there was a mast or a uh, a, a separate um, elevator on the on once on each side of the building. One side um, brought people up, and let's see if I can go back to this slide, and maybe you can see it. Uh, that's hard to see there, but essentially, on one side of the building, there was a separate elevator that that brought materials and people up, and the the there was a big um, container that would be loaded with mortar set on this elevator and then it would ride up to whatever level the the platform the climber was set at and it would it would be pushed onto this ramp uh, from a ramp it would be pushed onto this um this platform at whatever height the robot was at and it was i was i rode with it a couple times and it was it was pretty seamless and it was pretty amazing <laughs> Is the robot able to work around the brick ties or does in, at, at what points did human interaction have to come in? So good question. It was able to work around brick ties. Okay. Um, here is a shot of it just before there were brick ties. And I think in the beginning I had a shot where it was actually laying bricks on top of the brick ties. But um, it didn't have any trouble with brick ties. And those were intermediate as we went up. The only time that the robot was, um, the bricks were laid before the robot started was right at the shelf angle. Um, sometimes the, the uh, mortar uh, dam behind the, the shelf angle would get in the way. So it became easier to just lay the first course by hand and then let the robot go up from there. Good questions, thank you. How often did the laser aligning it need to be moved? 
essentially, whenever you moved the stair or the um, the mast climber, you had to move the laser, and they had a, a, a method of aligning it precisely each time that was coordinated ahead of time by the contractors, and um, that was really the only thing that slowed them down was moving the mast climber and then leveling it essentially and then re-leveling the laser or realigning the laser with the previous row. But they got pretty good at it and it only took, I was up there several times and it only took about hmm, 10 or 15 minutes to do that. I, uh, I see Rachel has her hand up. I do, yes, thanks Chris. Thanks for the presentation, Steve. Sure. Um, wondering about more about the robot's limitations. I know you talked about rounding corners and maybe not being able to install at curved walls. Are there any other limitations to these robots? Uh, I am sorry about the uh, noise in the background. <laughs> uh, the other, so this thing can actually be programmed to lay brick around a window and so forth, but there weren't any here. So it was pretty seamless. That does slow it down. Um, right now it cannot turn corners and um, and it, and it does have issues with um, if the wall is out of plumb. So in this case, what we had to do, um, because the wall, the concrete wall itself had issues, which was, I, I didn't go into that, but essentially it was about six inches out of plumb from the top to the bottom. So we added an extra brick to the width of the, of the wall on the end. And essentially the shelf angles were, projected out a little bit further to eliminate the problem with the robot. Um, now, some things that are really cool that the robot can do that we they didn't choose to do on here is the robot can corbel brick. It can do a fish scale. It can do all kinds of creative construction. And um, they just didn't want any of that on this project, but it can, it's really pretty amazing what the robot can do as far as being creative with brick placement. Any other questions? I, I, I could actually share a couple links with more videos on this, but. Yeah. yeah, Steve, I got a question. This is Jason. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about uh, the cost of this unit. Like how much, do you know how much it costs to, you know, use it per day? Uh, how that compares to, you know, the typical cost of a mason per day. Obviously it, it goes a lot faster and it saved a hundred days. That's a significant cost savings, but um, can you speak on that for a second? Um, I wish I had that at my fingertips. I can forward that, I can get that information and afford it to you, but I, I don't have that handy. Um, I know it was, um, I know it was enough cost savings that it, it made the job a success for everybody involved. I know the contractor is HOAR Construction, H-O-A-R. And um, I know they, they had a, uh, you know, they're interested in doing this again. At the time, this was the largest project that this robot had ever done, but um, I don't know the exact cost of the robot off the top of my head, but thanks for, thanks for checking. Hey, Steve, it's Ed Pang from New York. Um, hey, Ed. Great presentation. I apologize, I was two, three minutes late, so I might have missed okay. some of the contextual stuff, but um, so this, this technology is, um, it, it, it looks amazing. It looks like the work is, is nearly perfect. Is, is this sort of readily uh, available um, robotic technology that is being utilized in parts of the country where they're not afraid of unions? Or is, is this really an experimental thing that was sort of a joint project between the federal, uh, this is a federal contract, right? So was, there, was, it, was it kind of, what was the context of this? Was this kind of like, uh, you know, let's try it, let's try and test out a new technology or is this technology in fact readily available and it just happened to be used at a very large installation? Good question. This was in 2017 and essentially at the time, this was the 20th project of this type in the country, which is pretty new. Um, now there's a, there's a robot that is used in Australia that is it's called the Hadrian robot. And it claims that it can lay up to a thousand bricks a day. I haven't used it or seen it, but there are several different 
manufacturers that have the ability to lay bricks robotically. And I believe it's becoming more and more popular every year. Um, and, I, and I think they're getting around the, the problem with masons, with, with unions and so forth, with um, you know, labor um, unions that have any kind of a conflict with being robots replacing masons. But I spoke with several of the masons on the project, throughout the project, and they were delighted to be part of this project. They really, they got a kick out of it. And, they, and then I believe they're being candid. I mean, you're up there all day with these guys talking with them. And um, they really, they were very professional and uh, they had a lot of training and um, it went pretty smooth. Thanks for the questions. Sure, and, and I'm sorry, one more. Um, in terms of the sure. programming, is one of the Masons trained as a programmer? Do they need to be trained as programmers? I mean, is the person in control of this machine on site with you, or is this something that's done, you know, in, in headquarters somewhere where, you know, the, the robot was fabricated or something? Both. In this image, you can see there's a, um, a Mason standing at the machine programming it. And they were all trained in the factory before they were on site. And then um, I, I was there with the factory representative several times on site while they were there making sure um, with just checking and making sure everything was going smooth as well as a lot of intensive training before anyone started. And they were there for at least two weeks, the first two weeks to make sure everything was running smoothly. And they actually sent, they actually trained two entire sets of masons on this robot. And they always had at least two people trained um, working with the robot at all times. It was pretty seamless. The name of the company is Construction Robotics that makes this robot. And, and they, were, they were great to work with. Steve, this is Dale again. I, uh, I may have missed this in the beginning. Can this handle CMU? full-size CMU or um, split-phase half CMU? There are <laughs> robots that can handle this, and I believe this one can be adapted to handle that. Um, we didn't have any of that in this site, but I know I, I've actually seen robots that can handle split-phase CMU and oversized bricks as well. There's, there's a lot of uh, flexibility. Um, in fact, I, I've seen some clips where you can you can um, rotate bricks as you would like at, at will with programming to get really unique designs with, with the robot. But there are, there are challenges in the field. Most of those uh, demonstrations I've seen have been in, um, in a warehouse or in, you know, inside of uh, a test area. Great questions, you guys, thanks. It really was an interesting project, and um, it was a real treat to work with this crew throughout the whole project and, and see it completed. Well, thanks very much. So I don't know if there's any other information that would be helpful to share, but thanks, everybody, and I'll be glad to provide additional information for anyone that's interested. Thank you.